Many people ask me to do a study for the right hand. Well, you came to the right moment because today we are going to do a simple, not too complicated study for the right hand. And hereby I present to you Louis Fiar Studies of the Young Cellist Study number 36, which is a study at the nut of the bow, or in other words, the frog of the bow. So today we are going to focus mainly on the right hand and a little bit on the arm. Which things we must avoid, what are the common mistakes that many people do and how to fix them. I am totally ready for it and I hope you too. And if you are new here on this channel, well, welcome, I'm Ida Laparev, glad to have you on board. On this channel I make cello technique tutorials, I cover different studies like this one over here, Fayard Studies of the Young Cellist. I cover different parts of cello playing and in general just to level up your level. It doesn't matter if you're a beginner, advanced or professional cellist. If this is what you're looking for then consider to subscribe. And also you can support my work through Patreon. You can find the link in the video description below. You can donate the amount that you wish in order to keep this channel active. Considering the value and hard work that I'm putting here in order to make your life easier in cello playing, I would highly appreciate for your support. So if you want to give me a Christmas present, then I will be more than happy for your contribution. So again, link is in the video description below. All right, enough talk and now let me play this study through so you have an idea how it sounds like. <laughs> As you can see, it's not the most complicated exercise, but there are a couple of things that we should avoid. First thing here that is very important is your bow grip. Depending on your bow grip, you will realize if this exercise is going to be easy for you or a pain in the butt. So what I often see with many people is that they hold their bow very tight. So they put a lot of tension into it like this. See, so it doesn't move. It gets completely stiff. You must never put tension anywhere. This is very important. These are words that I'm taking out of the cello vocabulary. Words like tension, pressure, stiffness, and so on. These words, I don't know what they mean. And the same has to be for you. You don't know these words, at least when you're playing the cello. Of course, we need to have a firm bow grip, so like that. See, firm, but in the meantime, relaxed. So you're able to do this. See how my index finger and the pinky moves? So this is a nice exercise that you can do. So you take with your left hand the tip of the bow and you push both hands to the direction. So you see how my index finger works? See? Like that. And then opposite, we pull. So we go with the left hand, we go there. And with the right hand, we want to go there. So like that. So see how the motion works. So this is something that you can do. This is very important. Index finger and pinky are the most important fingers of your right hand. Obviously also the thumb, but we're talking here mostly about the index finger and the pinky. So these ones. So what I showed is very important. So you need to develop your index finger and your pinky in case you haven't developed it yet. And these things you can develop with open strings or slow plate scales. So for instance, See the motion? Of course, at the beginning, we're not going to get nice bow connections, but that doesn't matter. We need to find that relaxed feeling, that firmness, but in the meantime, relaxed. So no problem. It's like you're sitting, you're pouring your index finger. So see also, when I start from the frog, my pinky sits a little bit. Of course, I'm exaggerating, shouldn't be like that, but you get my point. Yeah. 
because what happens if we get stiffness? This the sound gets blocked. All right, so this was one thing that I wanted to mention. This is very, 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 very crucial. This really is gonna depend how you're gonna play this study. As I said before, either it's gonna be easy for you or either you're gonna have a hard time playing the study. But okay, now that you know how important the bow grip is, so like this, right? Now we can go into the study. So the study has to be played near the frog, as Fiar is indicating. You see the letters FR, which means Am Frosch. Frosch is German for frog, or the title in English here, it's nut. Although I never heard about nut. I just know that it's called in English frog. And for the people that are really, really, really beginners, so they just started out to play the cello and they don't know what is the frog, uh, at the bow, the frog is this one here. So really at the beginning of the bow, that means frog or in German, am Frosch. So the first way to practice this study, I suggest you to do everything in detaché. So that means detached bowing. I'm gonna show you in order to get the motion right. Let's do this. <laughs> Good, and like this you do the, for the rest of the exercise in order to find this motion here. Once you understand how the motion works, we can play this now less detached with more directions. So like this. So not really on the string. This is on the string, right? This is detaché. So more jumpy. But with jumpy I don't mean also not, no, it's pretty close to the string. Okay, let's say that you're ha having a hard time finding this kind of spiccato here, then I suggest you to practice another way. And I mean by playing it continuously, so without the rest that are marked in the scores. Anyway, it's easier that I show you what I mean by that. Anyway, and so on. Sometimes it's going to be really difficult in order to have the coordination with the left hand and so on. But at least the first measures you can do like that continuously. So without a brace. So just, you just continue playing the eighth notes. Because the more you play this, the more you will feel better and secure about it. And the more you will understand the motion. After you have done that way of practicing, you can do now with the breaks. <laughs> So as mentioned before, a common mistake that people often do is that they play this with a stiff arm. So everything they play with a very stiff arm. And this exercise, this exercise is actually more for the wrist and for the finger. So not much arm used here. That's why I asked you before to practice and develop your right hand first before you dive into this exercise. Because when everything gets stiff, we will get this sound. That kind of sound. And when we developed that motion in the right hand, then we'll get this sound. Hear the difference? The sound reverbs more. The sound is more open. Of course, as we're facing many open strings, it's easy to make them scratchy. But anyway, the sound gets just better when you're more relaxed than stiff. Next thing I want you to do is to practice this by part per part. So in each measure here, we have two different figures, right? So this is the first measure. This is the first figure, yang pam. But then we have this, right? So your job here is to do this whole exercise like that. Let me show you a couple of measures so you have some orientation and you know how to work for the other measures until the end of the exercise.
and so on. So I was playing each time the first beat of each measure. So every time we have this yum pum, pum pum. Now let's go to the second part, which is this one. And so on. I think that you understand what I mean with that, right? And when you start to dominate these two different parts, when you're feeling that the sound is getting nice and so on, then try to connect. So... Because it's every time the same figure over and over again for the whole rest of the exercise. So if you have followed all the steps, so step by step, then I'm pretty sure you're gonna play this exercise pretty flawlessly, but it can take time to reach perfection. That's why we practice and we drill this kind of things. So that's all that I want to say for this exercise. These are the tips that I could give you. So the moral of the story is the motion of your right hand. So let me show you this again, this motion that you get. This is very important. So you really want to take care of that because or else you're gonna develop bad habits and then to take these bad habits out, it's gonna be more and more difficult. The very last tip I can give you here is that don't use the whole amount of bow. No, stay compact, stay disciplined, stay steady. Here in this exercise, we have rests over here. So make use of them. Each time that we do have a rest here, don't wait to put your bow back on its place. So don't wait until last minute. That's why I said be steady and ready. My other videos, I always talk about left hand anticipation, but this time it's about right hand anticipation. I'm gonna play now two examples when we are anticipating our left hand, so when our right hand is disciplined and when our right hand is not disciplined. Which one was wrong? Well, you find out, but for sure there was one that was all over the place. Anyway, that was it for today's lesson. I hope that you enjoyed your lesson. And remember, this study is in your favor when we're talking about right hand. If I would be you, I would include this study into your cello daily routine. I would do like 10, 15, 20 minutes maximum. You don't need to sit hours on that because it's easy to get bored. Again, why I'm saying to include this in your cello routine, it's because the more you're doing it, the better it will become. And with this, I will finish today's lesson and I hope that you learned a thing or two or that you found a few things helpful and useful. And also, I wish you all a Merry Christmas with your families. Don't practice too much. Eat well, this is very important because if you eat good, your stomach is gonna be growing up, so that means good for the sound. So screw diets, just kidding. Anyways, thank you for watching and we'll see us next week before the year ends. Bye-bye.